and we're back with some wall tactics here to talk about how to deploy orcs part one search and destroy this is going to be the first part in what we hope to be a successful series so let you know let us know what you think tell us how we can improve we're going to be using pictures to give actual examples as well as our typical presentation get some visuals up in here be sure to comment or interact in the live chat to let if you have any questions or disputes that way we can cover it because there's no dumb question just a question that wasn't asked so let's get stuck in lads starting with the fact that search and destroy is covered across four missions being mission a b d f so just take and hold priority targets servo skulls and supply drop as you can see for this presentation i'm going to be using gw layout three okay so i understand there's wtc there's itc the concepts will still apply it is up to you to make the discretion um and as well as matchup dependent is always going to be a factor. So I know that as well. Just know as we get into this, I'm going to be considering that, taking that in. But be sure to comment and let me know. First, we're going to start off with the tips and tricks before I get into each specific mission, right? So keep these in mind as we go over each deployment, uh, sorry, each mission with deployment in mind. So one, know which objectives to hold and when to fold. Meaning as an army that's considered a cheaper, non-durable, horde type army, it's not always behoove of you to fully commit on primary objectives with your army because then you're not controlling your rate of attrition, you might die. You might actually have to think of a late game. So you need to hold, know when to hold and when to fold. Two, thinking of how to break a castle, force the enemy to come out for primary by killing their high OC units and or their high mobility units. Three, give bait to pull key enemy units forward. That's even more important for this mission being search and destroy know that the no man's land in the middle is quite short that way you can make it across the board so it's easier to bait and to get stuck in once you do bait tactics is to push past the screens as most enemies will understand that you can close the distance on them quickly they will initially have screens therefore your screen clearing needs to be prioritized where it's placed be taken into consideration and the reserves of course then you have pre-measure for secondaries you have to consider investigate signals engage on all fronts and area denial if you're yourself playing tactical. If the inverse, you must consider denying enemies deep strike within three inches and or nine inches, right? So you need to deny enemies potential to score, deploy homers or enemy outpost. So those are things you can consider as well whenever you're doing your tips and tricks for when you're deploying. This Some of these tips apply to all the um, deployment zones, but we're talking about this one specifically. And then, in search and destroy, I'm a huge uh, advocate of putting units in reserve. So you have to think about what units on your list you're willing to have in reserve. And sometimes in other missions, you might not, or other deployment zones, excuse me, not, not. But for this one, be very um, open minded to putting different units into reserve. That way you have more assured board positioning, denying the enemy scoring potential on secondaries. Um, and you have the ability to maintain and keep pressure, right? Without just putting everything in the open and possibly getting shot up. So let's get into what I mean by turn one secondaries, engage on all fronts, investigate signals and area denial, right? This is visuals. If you're a newer player, I'm going to actually show this to you and exactly what I mean. So and engage on all fronts for the bottom left picture. As you can see, I have a truck. I have grots that are blue base colored. The yellow bar is my deployment line. What I've done is I've measured that they can actually make it to the opposite corner of the table utilizing their full movement. They move six inches. So I was sure to only measure them, be stacked up in the row so they're only three inches deep. You should be able to make it to one of the corners just based off that knowing you can move forward and engage. In investigate signals for the bottom right one, I'm measuring the corner of the table. Grots can move six inches. You need to be within nine inches. So I've done a 15 inch right there. So the grots can freely, if I have to, move back do investigate signals if I draw that turn one. And then on the top right, I have positioned Mazrog for area denial. He's a great area denial target because he's very hard to kill. He's dual purpose as acting as bait sometimes, um, and it will cause the enemy to commit. So very much in favor of these is what exactly what I mean, as in you should be pre-measuring this yourself as the player. And as you get through games, you'll understand uh, when to do this and what questions to ask. So the first mission we're going to go over, and I'm going to have a picture of exactly what I'm talking about when I deploy, so we can go into that and reference this as well. So key factors for primary mission on take and hold. So what is take and hold? 
in the second, third, and fourth battle rounds, at the end of each command phase, the player whose turn it is scores five VP for each objective marker they control for up to 15. In the fifth battle round, the player who has first turn scores VP as described, and the player who goes second uh, does it as described, but it, as so at the end of their command phase. Very straightforward. We know what that is. Just had to cover it in case you're listening. So for this mission, take and hold. Very important for you. Do not overcommit. This is a mission that is a controlled rate of attrition mission because it is very likely for point two, a late game comeback. It is very hard to stop the enemy from just sitting back in, let's say, a castling army or an army that's very elite to just go, hey, I'm going to stay on my home field objective and I'm going to reach out and tag one of the objectives. They can do that for two turns as you've overcommitted and said, I'm going to stand in the middle. I'm going to stand in those, uh, this another primary objective. I'm holding three. Ha ha. Remember what I said at the beginning of the presentation. Orcs are considered a horde, cheap, non-durable army as a whole, meaning that it's not behoove of you to try to hold objectives early in most cases um, on a take and hold mission because the enemy can actually push you right off that clean you right up and then come in for turn three four five and score 15s still backing out primary boom you're hurt third point is this is a very balanced mission right there's it's chilling rain don't have to take a lot of other things into consideration pretty straightforward right which is good for us because we love a straightforward game and it's a small no man's land meaning we can get stuck in much easier and much quicker Point four, deny enemy low commitment primaries. What I mean by that is if someone's deciding they're going to just go out, tag an objective, stay on their home field objectives, well, you can't really kill my rhino because you're not a shooting army, um, and you can't really kill it with your power claws, let's say, on a biker unit because they don't punch hard enough. Well, in that case, you don't have to commit, let's say, a squig hog boy unit to go punch a little rhino, right? You don't necessarily have to throw a beast boss on squigs or all the way up the field and attempt a nine-inch charge and hope you make it, and that's your whole game plan. What you can really do is say, I'm going to use my Death Killer War Trike, my commandos, a basic truck that's already had units disembark and staged to go up and tag an objective. Even, even if you don't out OC the enemy unit, just tying him means you denied him. Didn't even have to kill him, right? A lot of people tend to forget this as new orc players. Yes, we like to get stuck in. Yes, we like to kill. But when you're being cunning, understand that an overcommitment is not always the who of you. And if the enemy is undercommitting, it's good of you to undercommit as well if that's not your, we'll say, the side of the table that you're going to commit to overthrowing, right, or over, uh, oversaturating. Therefore, just tag it. Let them know, hey, I'm here. You're not scoring primary that turn. Oops, right? And that's really good when people have, let's say, rhinos. They have a couple scouts, um, you know, stuff like that. So enemy infiltrators really help with that too. And then for this mission, scoring secondary is very important because of what we discussed on point two, that primary is very easy to sit back and get while the enemy tries to tag you out and kill you down right so you need to think ah i must score my secondaries so you understanding your matchup who you're going into do i take tactical do i take fixed do i need to pressure do i need to sit back and then like i said before in this mission specifically reserves are very useful as well because the enemy is going to most likely not be super committal so you're going to be able to come in off the sides of the table for with your reserves grots flash kits, storm boys, whatever it is in your commitment. So in this mission, reserves are very, very useful and I do like to do it. Now, let me give you an example of mission A layout three. So this is, I have a rough Tyranid army put up. I don't have all the most meta Tyranid armies, but units, but as you can see, I've placed um, a Haro specs near objective one. That would be considered a low commitment for the cost of that unit of a, uh, of a, uh, Tyranid player, right? So on like about 125 points. We have what you would call the Trigon in the middle, or that big old boy, whatever he's called. You could pretend that's an enemy land raider, redeemer, something like that. There's the Maliceptor, and then you have the Carnifex, Doc Effects at the bottom, or Screamer Killer. That's another low commitment slash aggressive enemy unit they're going to do. As you can see what I did in my deployment zone, though, I have the Trike sitting by objective five. This would be considered my low commitment triangle or point of the table where I don't necessarily want to keep and hold objective five here. What I'm really looking to do is move the battle wagon up towards objective one, three. I have Maz there as bait for three. If I have to go towards forward, I still left the marker there so you can see that's still good for area denial. And I have Gaz positioned in the middle. Where you place Makari when you're deploying gas is very important as well because that is most likely going to be your committal size. So you can enjoy the 12-inch aura. Okay, 
battle wagon if the enemy cannot pop you go ahead and place it right on the line be um if he can pop you just keep aware that you need to be able to disembark freely and cleanly if the enemy is going to choose to take a firing lane run down the angle and shoot your truck shoot your trikes you must have follow-up units that can follow and tag the objectives that's why there's a biker there uh the bikers and the trucks there on the north side of the table you buy objective one you see i have grots that are moving up the table you could disembark the truck that is there which in this case i have the war boss there that's my war boss truck in that case you can drop the war boss in the knobs right there Behind that objective, they're safe. Use the grots to run up the table, either run onto that terrain or the truck to advance and start taking up that board space, knowing that the enemy most likely will not get lines of fire there, but you can stop their reserves from coming in. So in this case, of course, different matches are subject to change on this, but this is a very safe general deployment here. What you could do as well, that unit of blue grots that's at the top, you can reserve them. The flash gets very good for reserving in this as well. Um, and in other deployments, I'll show you if you have to deny three inch deep strikes, nine inch deep strikes and such what I do with my grads. But this was a very straightforward general deployment here. Is it subject to change? Of course it is. We're all different war bosses, but that goes on the mission. So going into the next mission, I want to talk about priority targets. It says in the second, third, fourth, and it does say the fifth, but in this card, it was outdated. So I gave it a little edit. At the end of each player's command phase, the player whose turn it is is scoring 5 VP for each objective marker they control up to 10 per turn, mm, not 15. But the dip, the reason for that is you score 5, up to 5 battle round 5, but at the end of the battle, you also score again. So it goes, each player scores 5 VP for objective marker they control at the end of the battle for up to 15 VP. This is similar to how we spoke about on taking hold where the enemy can hold and start scoring 10, 10, 10, right? So in this objective mission, um, I very, and sorry, the secondary part of this mission is six objectives as well. <clears throat> so this splits up into six objectives mission. Therefore, I suggest, of course, matchup matters, full commitment to get the en in the enemy's deployment zone, but also to gain board control. This is what I would consider a hammer anvil tactic in my head, right? We all know about World War Two, World War One, and World War Two, and people spoke start, spoke about the Blitz and how people considered a hammer and an anvil, where the Blitz union units were, were summarizing this, made it up one side through, um, through sorry, through Hunter Brain Fart. Uh, regardless, sorry, I shouldn't have referenced that. Point is, you want to be able to push through one side of the table and hold on the other side of the table, something like trikes, maz, trucks, wagons to hold while the rest of your units that are killy knobs gas squig hog boys push into the enemy deployment zone what i mean by max and then for my second point max primary is almost guaranteed because there is six objectives on this mission and you get five for each and you're only going to score 10 anyways very very unlikely that the enemy or you will or should hold three objectives each turn what you're going to do is go i'm going to hold this one for 10 and this one for 10 and i'm good hold try to kill you try to kill you that's why I very much consider the first point, you must full commit, full send, go get them. Because if you let them sit back and shoot you, trickle your army down, not engage with your wall turn, because the wall turn is very important, then they can actually trickle out the points and make a comeback on you from that. So third point, kill enemy scoring units, right? If they are not giving you bait because they only have to score 10, it's not committal. It is behoove of you as the orc player to go, hey, my trading units, my low investment units, maybe a five-man unit of knobs with the war boss, you need to go out there and start killing his low-cost units and killing his secondary scoring units. That way he has to come out and play the primary game. He has to come out and use some of his more valuable units to play the secondary game as well. They don't like to do that. Most armies don't like to do that. They don't have many units as we do. And like I said, in point four is this is a mission that I would consider more likely than not to do fixed secondaries, right? Not always, because we all like CP, your list is dependent, but because there's six objectives, pulling off a fixed secondary option is much more likely, much easier. And it goes with point one that I made for full commitment. You're already overwhelming one side of the table. You're already tagging that objective, possibly near another objective. Go ahead, go for cleanse, go for homers. And then if there's a bring it down, go for that too. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend assassinate as it could be 
uh, bait, but in some matchups, you go ahead and do it. And in this mission as well, which is very um, common for this deployment for search and destroy, secondary play is key because again, you can see on this mission, primary is so easy to get. And when you're going into an army that's either just trying to shoot, which is very common in this edition, just sit back and shoot. You, you must take away their scoring units and then you can gang up on their elite units when they come out to play on your wall turn, get in there, or you just denied them from that and they have to start using different units like a land raider to do a secondary, right? So in this mission, um, secondary play is very, very, very important and you might want to consider a later turn wall. You know, that's up to you. Now, this is deployment three. I've slightly adjusted it. As you can see, I have, I should have shown another picture, but in the right side of the table, you can near objective five, there is my knob truck. I have measured that I can make it if I make a deployment to get behind the building in the bottom right corner as a staging platform. On that side, I also have the battle wagon where I'm staging as well. I can move up near objective four or five. If I move slightly and I get shot up, I can disembark behind the center terrain objective and be safe and still be near gas for the Makari lethal aura. That way I can blow up enemies that are near objective four or five and possibly tangentially tag in a unit that's near objective three um, if there's anything left over there, right? Start clearing them up. That's why I really appreciate gas on this mission as well. And um, him being really centralized and not put in reserves important. So, and this, just so you guys haven't noticed, this is a Sean Naden archetype like we like to call with the wagon. I have the trike though, stuff like that. What I've done as well, because it is a six objective mission and I want to just strictly deny enemy from scoring primary on, turn, on objective one and three, as you can see here, because if I'm committing the four and five, I'm gonna blow them out the water, I'm gonna kill them, I'm gonna smash through them and get to their primary on their side of the table. That means they are going to be looking to tag on one or and or tag on three. Therefore, I have Maz in response. I have Flash gets in response. I have the trike and you can bring in reserves, whether they're Storm Boys or Grots to come in near one and or five based off how you feel you deem that you need the commitment on OC, right? So the trike is great for this. If you have Mandos, you watch the Mando video, I would put Mandos near objective one here, possibly stuff like that. Um, if you like to bring even more infantry and storm boys, go ahead and do that. Trucks can help with that as well. But this is different than the objective mission A, but similar in the sense that gas is still there. Also, you have to consider denying enemy three inch deep strike enemy uh, uh, redeploys coming in like that. You can utilize your second unit of grots or whatever you deem. So storm boys, if you decide not to put them in reserve, because sometimes they're good for secondary scoring. Use that. Take that in consideration. I've taken into consideration with this deployment too. Don't worry. So, going into the next mission, we have Supply Drop. So, Supply Drop is a fun mission. A bit different, right? Uh, not people like it. It's fun because it's so hectic and us orcs are into the chaos. So, Supply Drop. This is the mission where first you deploy and then there's a uh, there's an, uh, uh, an alpha and an omega objective, right? You don't know what this is going to be when you start deploying. So this is sometimes a very high risk, high reward type of thing where some people will go, I'm just going to full commit to that objective. And if I get it as my omega, I win. That is actually a tactic, right? If you're going up against a hard army, understand that just fully deploying and sometimes hoping that you get omega might end up work. Do I come, uh, suggest it all the time? No, that's a something you get through repetitions and understanding when to call it. So in the second and third battle round, at the end of each command phase, the player whose turn it is scores 5 VP for each objective marker they control no man's land. In the fourth battle round, at the end of each command phase, the player whose turn it is scores 8 VP for each objective marker they control no man's land. And the player whose turn it is at the end of the battle round uh, the player who has the first turn scores 15 VP in their command space if they control objective markers in no man's land. The player who has second turn scores 15 VP at the end of their turn if they subject in no man's land. That's because in this objective, alpha will be disappearing, right? As you can see, I should read it right here. I'm going to start at the middle of this paragraph. At the start of the fourth battle round, the uh, alpha objective is removed from the battlefield. And at the start of the fifth battle round all objective markers in no man's land a part of no man's land uh, a part of 
omegas are also removed. That means two of the objectives are going to be gone. So let's go into point one. Focus on Omega. Of course, it is going to be a bit tricky because you are deploying prior to rolling out what these are. Yes, I've seen people do this wrong and forget this. Be sure to do this correctly. It is vital. It makes the addition much more difficult, but it is how you must play. So what I mean by that is when I have gas and I find out where Omega is, best believe I'm going to start moving gas to that direction, right? So one. This is a late game mission. More so than not, this is a do I understand how to commit kind of mission. So focus on Omega. Point two, do not spread yourself thin, meaning do not chase down Alpha a lot of the time. This is another case where I would say you must deny primary on Alpha, but not necessarily go commit to it with your full army or even high value army, because now you're going to be out of position. You're going to be out of position for the wall. Maybe you got a position for gas. Um, and you can end up being isolated and get that whole unit just picked up because the enemy most likely has shooting and us as orcs do not. Therefore they can shoot you over there and, or be redeploying, let's say gray Knights, let's say Necrons, and then end up going towards Omega anyway. So you must take that into consideration too. matchup dependent as well. This is a typical low scoring primary mission because of that factor because people know they're going to be disappearing and it, the points actually increase and in what you gain as the mission goes on. This is very counterintuitive to orc players, especially new orc players. A lot of the time you want to run up, get stuck in, start crumping heads. This one is, hey man, if you start doing the wrong side of the table, someone could just, hey, I'm barely alive, but I took Omega, boom, I made up the difference in primary. You didn't score enough in secondary, you gone. And what I mean by my fourth, and, and like I said, this is possible turn three while going into my fourth point. This is a turn where I have more times than not done a turn three wall instead, right? For the reasons I stated above. And last but not least, again, deny, deny, deny primary. Typically, you're going to be denying alpha and be prepared to stage. This is a cunning mission. This is a patient mission. This is a mission where we'll really test your generalship. So that's why this is important that you understand when to do what you have to roll out, who, what's alpha and omega first. And you must understand, ooh, redeploy shenanigans. Where am I going where? What have I built into my list? Let's say you're going to an event, an RTT, a GT, where they're going to be running this mission. You might want to tech. You uh, Change that. You will want to tech into having pieces that can start to play this mission and or at least practice knowing how you're going to play this mission if you're going for, let's say, all truck spam or something, right? So this is a mission that is very much about cunning, very much about being... Um, patient and very much about understanding the very high nuance there is to this scoring mission so low scoring primary but late game high scoring primary and you must consistently score your secondaries on this mission so let's look at an example i again did end up using the first picture that i showed you before but that's because this is a general understanding uh there's a general deployment of how you would kind of do this like i said you could take the second unit of grots put them in reserve flash gets put them in reserve but this is for um you could say in this one mission objective five ended up being the alpha right therefore i'm going to send my trike over there as a low commitment readjust my flash gets which are next to the trike right there and move towards objective three. That way I can then turn three, disembark, shoot, turn two, maybe disembark, shoot the stuff that is moving towards one across the table or trying to stop me from moving across the table. Right. So that's why flash gets still, there's a still an okay place to put them. If you're not choosing to put them in reserve Maz and gas, I love to put them near the middle just because they, they feel so great when they're next to each other. One is a hammer and one is an anvil, my boys. I must stress this point. Yes, I know you're gas one time, one shot, and gron. You got lucky because in reality, he's that's not his purpose, that's not his job necessarily. A lot of the time, he's to hold people or to bait people. Okay, so that's why he still ended up there. And let's say on this mission, Omega ended up being one. That's very much so where you're going to start staging, getting ready, um, and prepare for the enemy to understand that they're going to commit to Omega 2, okay? Which is why you're setting up for a possible turn 3 wall. If they give you stuff, they're going to turn 2 off, go ahead. Get stuck in, right? But I'm being general here. I'm, I'm going to assume that you and your opponent are competent players and they understand how this mission is going. Never underestimate your opponent. Let them, you know, assume that they understand how this mission is going to be played. They're not going to let you run them over. Sometimes that happens though. So if it happens, take it, boys. So this mission, 
like I said before, very much nuanced. But a mission that is not as nuanced is the last but certainly not least mission. Mission D, deploy servo skulls. And here I put casual, right? Casual. Okay, so this is a mission where uh, not a lot of people run it competitively. But if you're trying to have fun, you're playing at your local games, if you're doing an escalation league, you're doing a crusade thing, you're likely to see this just because it's fun and it's unique, right? So let's talk about it. We're not going to spend too much time on it, but it, it's a very odd mission. So I'm going to point out a couple keys here, right? So just looking at this left side, one is push everything together. Because you're going to be constantly moving these at the end of the turn, right? Not the end of uh, at the end of each player's turn, you're able to mush the objective. So I like to push these near each other. That way, everything's close. I can start tagging them, maximize my OC as an orc player, and be getting stuck in in combat. Two is like I brought up before: is objective is kicked at the end of the turn. Very, very odd how that works. Very much catches people off guard. A lot of time we're looking for command phase. A lot of time we're thinking it's it's our turn only. No, no, no. It's each turn my gets each turn that's hilarious and very awkward three scored at the end of each player's turn though right so you move it at the end of each turn but you're scoring at the end of each player's turn not in the command phase Just catches people off guard all the time four possible utility in kicking the objectives away from no man's land to deny enemy secondaries if they pull a secondary to <laughs> they're gonna have to score in the sec if they have to do it in the center go ahead and kick that into the deployment zone and be like, well, well, I guess you're not scoring that, are you, buddy, buddy? So it's very odd. That's very much fun where you can think about kicking. Going into the fifth point, kick away from enemies hard to kill or high OC units. For example, a Narn Emissary. If you see him coming, you know he's going to get a five up Fiona Paint, and he's crazy OC from that. Go ahead and tag it. Kick it away from him. Use your units and your models to box it out. Not allow him to actually get on that. It's very odd, very unique. Um, uh, this is what I call a casual mission because the more that this addition has been going on, the less you've been seeing this mission be played. Um, and so we'll see what ends up being with this mission in the future. But, you know, when you're doing Escalation League and you're playing everything, have fun. People call this soccer. You know, a lot of the time around here, we call it soccer. And uh, so, yeah, very much cool. Now, that was my quick summary, summarization, you know, of these four missions that all go towards search and destroy right this is going to be a series we're going to cover each deployment zone and each mission that actually applies directly to them so if you want to see improvements if you want more detail if you want more or less pictures be sure to let me know because we're going to be improving on this it was the first time i like to actually i don't want to be covering things as a general overview as much i want us to be specific we're a specific orc channel therefore i want to you know adhere to your specific needs and talk to you guys about what you actually want to hear so at this point i'm going to actually look at the chats that way if you guys if i miss something if you guys um, want to dispute me on something or bring up a question or a point that maybe someone in the comment section is going to leave go ahead and start writing it in chat right now i'm going to interact with you guys and you guys let me know but of course we always got to start with the whoa from my get aaron let's go and of course hello to hubert west welcome to becoming a member you get welcome to the great wall oh and that being said we have the fighting fedora i haven't seen you in a while you get thank you for the ten dollar super chat wall for the revolution right i see i see that which little <laughs> your ground loving get oh and he also gifted not five but ten wall tactic gifted memberships wall for the fighting fedora so be sure if you're a new get around here um, go ahead and try to accept that you get badges you get emotes that are specifically for oats so let me get some orcs so let me get some knobs some more bosses in the chat some badges if you want fighting fedora go ahead and throw 20 grots in the chat you know with your badges let me see you guys get stuck in also know you start off as a runt you become a squig you become a boy and then eventually one day you could be a gas so we'll very much appreciate that thank you very much fighting fedora very generous of you I like this. John Smith says, oh, I love the overhead. Thank you, John. I, I'm glad you told me that. And yes, you must be cunning. And like Aaron said, he said, I charge the opponent deployment zone on supply drop. But pff, there you go. That some people very much are like, I'm just going to go for it full in. And that's what's the key. I didn't push that point of, hey, there's a short deployment zone. Go ahead and run in turn one. A lot of people do understand that that's 
our best mission for turn one charges. I'm just going to straight out say it. It is very much the best mission for turn one charges, but there are nuances to that. And I wanted to bring those a little bit more to the forefront and start talking about how to be cunning first, right? We all know how to deploy on the line, say Wong gets stuck in. A lot of people already do that at the beginning baseline level or entry level of 40K and understanding it. So this is a little bit more of a nuanced approach to how people as a more technical, maybe, you know, RTT, GT level might end up looking at it. But pff, there's been plenty of times where I've played a mission and uh, ended up charging people turn one because they overcommitted, walked into the middle, disrespected me. And I was like, well, I could just go ahead and reach it out, buddy, especially if I have disembarked um, on my turn one and then end up charging on turn two, early two, two, because I'm like, well, uh, here we go. Right. If, if I got to here we go and a follow me, lads, you know, I can like with that big unit of 20 boys or whatever, I can just get stuck in, touch multiple objectives, hold you in deployment zone. That's always a factor. Aaron loves being an aggressive and using his quick offs. So that's very important that we talk about that too. But this was definitely me trying to keep up to the point of let's come up with a, you know, a bit more calculated kind of way to approach it. But if someone gives you that early wah, obviously, you know, to get stuck in and take them off the table, right? Oh, I like this. John Smith said, deploy servo skulls, rugby. Yeah, we, you know, not too many of us play rugby here around America. So it did uh, go over, you know, I didn't end up referencing rugby, but yes, soccer, rugby. Uh, rugby is a bit cooler anyway. So I like that. Then we have Wall from Hubert West. Let's go get. It. Thank you guys for the ones who put uh, William Perry for putting a runt in the chat. We got Straw Luffy with the grots in the chat. <laughs> you guys, I like how you guys put runts and grots instead of putting the orc boys or something, right? We got Hubert. Awesome job. I followed you since December. Awesome upgrade from stuff to content, more confident in front of the camera, which is not so easy. Well, thank you, Huber. Very much so. Um, any criticism sometimes, and I take it very well. We, we take it as constructive criticisms, right? We got thick skin, strong hide, strong bones. We can get, take anything you got to say. This is about you guys. This is about our community as a whole. This channel is only like eight months old. Um, so, and we don't have, you know, necessary skills or expertise or experiences in presentation and technical stuff. So whatever you guys would think would benefit us or you for you to learn, let us know. I will acquire those skills. I will perform to the utmost best that I can, and I will improve on that. And uh, I really want to hone in on what you guys want. This is where this video idea even came from. Someone said, I want to hear more about orc deployment. You know, there's a lot of videos about general deployment. And I almost went into just like one video about uh, general orc deployment and then i you know started talking to a chris tech lord and he, he was going back and forth and he's like you should just make it very specific cover each deployment and all the missions in there that'd be more useful to your community so i very ho much hope it is and i hope you guys very much appreciate it so thank you hubert because i appreciate you letting me know thank you aaron for the gases in chat whoa let's go so you get i very much hope that that was um a better presentation and gave you guys the information you wanted be sure to check out our Amazon affiliate plug because we just got that because you guys are so supportive. Know that we'll be at Adepticon next weekend. Therefore, if you see me, come run up on me and give me a hug. No, I'm just kidding. You don't got to hug me. But you come up in, you know, um, be sure to come talk to me. I'm going to be there for open play, not doing the tournaments necessarily. So I'm actually there to talk to you guys. I'm very much there to play an open game with any of you guys. I'm going to bring a somewhat fluffy list, but I'm still going to try to crump you. So um be sure to keep that we have merch up now because of you gets as well and we're not going to do our normal wednesday or friday presentation because we'll be at adepticon for that so be sure in this video to leave your comment let me know what you guys want to follow up of course we're still going to have um our part two three four five for this that way we can um cover every deployment in every mission and progressively get better at this. The reason I also wanted to start with Search and Destroy is because it is the more straightforward mission and one of our best deployments. So I wanted to start off with this. Hopefully I did it a good job for you gets. Let me know how I did. Let me know how I can improve because it's all about the great war, right? We're here not to be strictly competitive. We're here to be competent. We're here to bring up the orc community as a whole because yes, everybody loves us, but now it's a time for everybody to fear the great war. And he says, and you rock. Thank you. You rock, Hubert. Thank you. All you, this community rocks as a whole, dude. Orcs are like the dopest community that there is right there alongside uh, Aston and Tom. Those guys are cute too. You know what I'm saying? Little Umis, a little soft, you know, like a soft version of us, right? Um, shout out to Morty and Glory. And, you know, very much appreciate you guys. This is all because of you. And I'm definitely going to be doing more of these. 
any more of you guys want to hear about tactics and the codex is going to come out so we're definitely going to be covering the codex we know that people are going to be thank you by the way deployment will be helpful yeah i know that when the codex drops a bunch of different competitive channels are gonna be like this is the new high topic way we're gonna cover that too but we're gonna cover every detachment i'm gonna be immediately coming out the gate playing with anything that i find fun or interesting i'm interested in walkers i'm interested in the green tide i'm interested in the speed wall so as soon as gw gives us rules for that even leaks for that i will be covering that as well and i'll be playing it against competitive lists going to rtts with everything each detachment so we'll have plenty of stuff to cover on that plenty of our own anecdotes and our wednesday streams to cover how everybody else in the community is doing so the rise of the green tide is upon us he gets don't worry about Tau. Don't worry about Dark Angels. Don't worry about none of them beakies because it's about the wall. So we have, oh, Fedora, what would you say? The revolution will come for you last, Eddie. Okay, okay, you can come for me last, but uh, that might be the biggest problem for you because then I'll be most ready because I'm a cunning lad. Stoked for the codex. Dude, super stoked for the codex. Wolf, love these discussions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited. I, I appreciate that. Um. This is what it's about, guys. This isn't necessarily me preaching at the community. This is a conversation with the community. That's why I do a presentation video like this, and then I go to the, the chats because maybe I missed something. Maybe somebody makes a good point, um, you know, stuff like that. Maybe somebody has a question based off my presentation. This is why this is an open conversation. This is not a rant. This is not a preaching. This is I'm just a war boss just like you. I respect all my fellow war bosses and their opinions as well. And if you're a new git, you're new to the green wall, then I'm here to help. And so are the fellow orcs in the Discord in our community as a whole. So shout out to our Discord. Shout out to the Green Tide. I appreciate you gits. Let's get stuck in, lads. I'll see you at Adepticon. But there's one thing to keep in mind if you see me at Adepticon. Is don't cross our wall because we'll knock your teeth out. Whoa.